Hello, my lovelies. Um, a regular viewer might well be asking themselves, why is Grimm doing less politics and commentary lately? Well, when it comes to the commentary and the kind of pop culture commentary and, and so on, I am bored with being relentlessly negative and I am bored with endlessly being fed shit <laughs> by all these people trampling over our collective childhoods and ruining what made many things great and never producing anything new, just shitting up old stuff. And I get my fix of doing that kind of commentary over on The Weekend Geek on Saturdays on T-Shirted Historians channel. So yeah, there's that. But when it comes to politics, it just all feels so hopeless and shitty right now. And I don't feel that there's any difference I can make really by voting, uh, let alone by whining on a YouTube channel. And I'm also worried about audience capture, which I've seen happen to plenty of people in the YouTube commentary space. Um, and I really don't want that to happen. <laughs> I want to be myself and attract an audience on that basis. Uh, this, this seems like a bad idea because uh, <laughs> it's not working but I would rather have people who like and enjoy being challenged by me rather than people who just want to hear what they want to hear and nothing else so there's that aspect but politics in the UK is just relentlessly hopeless and shitty our country has been captured by a far-right cabal within the Conservative Party who insist on repeatedly driving us off the same cliff over and over again. And the opposition party, Labour, they've moved so far to the right, I would now describe them as a centre-right party in the style of the US Democrats rather than a genuinely left-wing alternative. This despite being pretty damn popular under Jeremy Corbyn and a move back towards the centre a little bit would probably have been enough but they're obsessed with recapturing the people that switched sides on the last major election and went to the Tories over the Brexit issue so in other words they're chasing the, the xenophobic racist vote the, uh, the the culture warrior vote they're still economically a bit more to the left but really they're just Tories with the decency to give you a reach around rather than just Tories at this point and our political system is still screwed, so there is no point voting for anybody outside the, the main two parties, at, at least here in England. Elsewhere, it's a little bit more complicated. The first-past-the-post system, just we're not very democratic at all. And the Tories have further put their thumb on the scale when it comes to elections, taking another page out of the US copybook. And um, they're going to be demanding photo ID. Uh, Vote scams has never been a problem, really, in this country. I think last election, there were two confirmed cases of vote, voter fraud out of the entire country. So it's a solution to a problem that doesn't exist, but what it actually is is a solution to them losing because the ID that they're requiring and so on tends to favour you know, older, let's be real, white, uh, voters within the UK who tend to swing Tory so it's it's a deliberate attempt to to shift things to give you some idea of how bad things are here at the moment right now our Home Secretary who is a person of colour herself is currently backing and defending uh, a Britain first supporting pub landlord over their gollywogs the whole thing is stupid right but a person of colour within a far-right, xenophobic Tory government standing up for Britain first, who are genuinely actually fascists, uh, over gollywogs, uh, it, it just it, it encapsulates the problem. I mean, I think they have their, their free expression rights, and in a, in a just world they would express themselves how they wish, and most people would go, well, I'm not going near that, and their pub would go under. But uh, that's not the world we live in. It's just stupid. And US politics, I mean, it's kind of like a spectator sport. I, I enjoy following 
what goes on between the two teams, but I feel doubly helpless there. I have no say whatsoever in what goes on in the US, and US politics is breathtakingly stupid and tribalistic. And any time I engage on any topic of any sort, however measured, careful and thoughtful I try to be, it inevitably gets a horrible reaction. I mean, the trans-slash-drag debate is absurd. It's heated enough over here, and I've seen it capture otherwise reasonable people to, to both extremes, pro and anti. But in America, it's just like acknowledging that maybe you know trans people are, are human and as such have rights and shouldn't be discriminated against is seen as an extreme position, which is weird, isn't it? <laughs> It does seem very odd. Um, maybe it's just a British perspective that sees drag as not being a, a big a big deal. And then there's uh, not a day goes by when I'm not assaulted by the fash on one hand or their counterparts, whatever you choose to call them, in my comments, uh, particularly on my videos debunking far-right conspiracy theories. Um, yeah, they want to convince me that their conspiracy theories aren't aren't racist but their go-to insult is always that I'm uh, a mudblood of some kind. <laughs> Still I can't let this one thing pass without comment. We're set to bring back prison hulks, that's prison ships, these were things that were used in the 18th and 19th century. Back then of course these were ships that were essentially decommissioned, they could float but weren't seaworthy and they were used to house prisoners because the prisons were overflowing. Horrific conditions, rats, small spaces, they were completely crowded, disease spread extremely easily and so on. Now of course modern prison ships aren't going to be anything like as bad as the old ones were but by modern standards they're still going to be quite inhumane. They were being used in Holland and at least one of the ships that we're buying, that's really a giant barge, uh, comes from Holland, which means that Holland might be stopping that policy, which was always problematic and illegal in the first place, and yet we're following suit by buying up used prison ships, which are problematic and illegal, and implementing a policy that they seem to be moving away from at least slightly. Here it's problematic and illegal as well. I guess we're moving people from small boats to big boats when they cross the channel, I, I, I guess. Uh, the reason it's illegal, by the way, is because you need to make sure that the people on board have a way to leave and return to the facility easily. And unless it's permanently moored to land, um, that's not something that's easy to provide. They may not be as bad as the prison hulks of the past were, but they're still not going to be good. The space in them is going to be small and limited. We've seen what happens on board cruise ships when something goes wrong, and these are not up to cruise ships standard and don't have the money and backing that cruise ships will have. During Covid and even before we saw what happened with disease outbreaks on cruise ships. So you can imagine that the disease problem is still going to be a big one here. At this rate we're going to be back to the workhouse and other horrendous things from our past and we're being held hostage by this geriatric voting bloc that is a smaller and smaller minority of the population which as a whole is left wing on most individual issues. We're copying policies from countries that are bringing an end to those policies. We're doing all this stupid shit and it's all to distract from the horrors <laughs> that have been visited upon the country because of Brexit and because of the xenophobia and the racism and the so on that the government is now doubling down on. We need a change but there isn't a way to force a change and even if we get the opportunity the whole voting system is rigged to exclude the kinds of people that we'd like to vote for. It's just broken and that's why I'm not commenting on these things so much except in this instance with the prison hulks because that's history which we're supposed to learn from 
or else we're doomed to repeat it. Zhang, stay safe out there. There's a magical time on the cusp of true adolescence where you're no longer quite a child and not yet an adult. A time where the confidence of the teenager and the wonder of the child combine in a surge of optimism, hope and imagination to make some of the most important moments of our lives. There's a rich vein of films that tap into this time. These are the films where the kids save the world, find something fantastical or solve a problem that the adults can't or wouldn't even believe existed. Some of these are fantastical, some are not. Some are a loving homage to the older versions of the same sorts of stories. If you like The Goonies, Super 8, The Monster Squad, or Explorers, this is a game for you and your kids. Available at post-mort.com and drive-thru RPG.